You guys will find that you have passions and having a passion is a gift. I think we all have passions and you don't get to uh, choose them, they pick you, but you have to be alert to them. You have to be looking for them. And when you find your passion, it's a fantastic gift for you because it gives you direction, it gives you purpose. Uh, you can have a job or you can have a career or you can have a calling. And the best thing is to have a calling. And if you find your passion, you'll have that and all your work won't feel like work to you. Many, many kids and many grown-ups do figure out uh, over time what their passions are. And sometimes we let our, I don't think it's that hard. I think what happens though sometimes is that we let our intellectual selves overrule those passions. Uh, and so that's what needs to be guarded against. My job, one of my jobs as the leader of Amazon is to encourage people to be bold. And people love to focus on things that aren't yet working. Um, and that's good, it's human nature. That kind of divine discontent can be very helpful. But uh, you really, you know, it's incredibly hard to get people to take bold bets. And you need to encourage that. And if you're gonna take bold bets, they're gonna be experiments. And if they're experiments, you don't know ahead of time whether they're gonna work. Uh, experiments uh, are by their very nature uh, prone to failure. But big successes, a few big successes compensate for dozens and dozens of things that didn't work. So, you know, bold bets, AWS, Kindle, Amazon Prime, our third-party seller business, all of those things are examples of bold bets that, uh, that, that did work, and they pay for a lot of experiments. I've made billions of dollars of failures at Amazon.com, literally billions of dollars of failures. And, uh, uh, you know, you might remember Pets.com or Cosmo or, you know, you know, give myself a root canal with no anesthesia very easily. Uh, none of those things are fun, but they, but they also, they don't matter. What really matters is companies that don't continue to experiment, companies that don't embrace failure, they eventually get in a desperate position where they, the only thing they can do is make a kind of Hail Mary bet at the very end of their corporate existence. Whereas companies that are, you know, uh, making bets all along, even, you know, big bets, but not bet the company bets. I don't, I don't believe in bet the company bets. That's when you're desperate. That's, that's the last thing you can do. It's not, you can be out of work and be, have terrible work-life balance. You know, even though you've got all the time in the world, you, right. you could just feel like, oh my God, you know, I'm miserable and you would be draining energy. And so you have to find that harmony. It's a much better word. And I think for most people, it's about meaning. People want to know that they're doing something interesting and useful. And for us, you know, because of the challenges that we have chosen for ourselves, uh, we get to work in the future, and it's super fun to work in the future for the right kind of person. You need to be um, if you, uh, nimble and robust, so you need to be able to take a punch, uh, and you also need to be quick and, 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 and innovative and, and doing new things at a high speed. That's, that's the best defense against the future, and you have to always be leaning into the future. If you're if you're leaning away from the future, the future is gonna win every time. Never, ever, ever lean away from the future. It, we all have adversity in our lives. You, you, I, 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 would, I, would, I doubt if you really, you know, if you know somebody, any friend or anybody that you talk to, um, uh, there's no lack of adversity. And, the, uh, and by the way, that's good because it's what teaches us how to get back up. You fall down, you get back up. It always happens. And uh, you know you get certain um, gifts in life, and you want to take advantage of those. Um, uh, but you, I guess, my advice on adversity and uh, success would be to be proud not of your gifts, but of your hard work and your choices. So you know you may be the kinds of gifts you get in life. You know you might be really good at math. It might be really easy for you. That's a kind of gift. Um, but practicing that math and taking it to the next step, that could be very challenging and hard um, and take a lot of sweat. That's a choice. You can't really be proud of your gifts because they were given to you. Um, you can be grateful for them and thankful for them. Um, and, but your choices, you choose to work hard. 
um, you choose to do hard things. Those are choices that you can be proud of. Being an inventor requires, because the world is so complicated, you have to be a domain expert. I mean, in a way, even if, even if you're not at the beginning, you have to learn, 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 learn enough so that you become a domain expert. But the danger is once you've become a domain expert, you can be trapped by that knowledge. And so inventors have this paradoxical ability to have that you know, 10,000 hours of practice and be a real domain expert and have that beginner's mind, have that, that look at it freshly even though they know so much about the domain. And that's the key um, to, to inventing. You, you have to have both. And I think that is intentional. I think all of us have that inside of us and we can all do it, but you have to be intentional about it. You have to say, yeah, I am gonna become an expert and I'm gonna keep my beginner's mind. You can't skip steps. You have to put one foot in front of the other. Things take time. Uh, you, there are no shortcuts. And, uh, but, uh, but you want to do those steps with you know, passion and ferocity. It's easy to have ideas. It's very hard to turn an idea into a successful product. There are a lot of steps in between, and it takes persistence, relentlessness, so I always tell people who are, you know, who think they want to be entrepreneurs, it's, you need a combination of stubborn relentlessness and flexibility. And you have to know when to be which. And basically you need to be stubborn on your vision because otherwise it'll be too easy to give up. But you need to be very flexible on the details. Because as you go along pursuing your vision, you'll find that some of your preconceptions were wrong. And you're gonna need to be able to change those things. So I think uh, taking an idea successfully all the way to the market and turning it into a real product that people care about and that really improves people's lives is a lot of hard work. Don't try to chase what is kind of the hot passion of the day. I think we actually saw this, I think you see it all over the place in many different contexts, but I think we saw it uh, in the internet world quite a bit, where, you know, at the sort of peak of the uh, sort of internet, uh, you know, mania in, say, 1999, you found people who were, uh, you know, very passionate, something they kind of left that job and decided I'm gonna, you know, do something in the internet because it's, you know, it was almost like the, you know, the 1849 gold rush in a way. I mean, you find that people, uh, if you go back and study the history of the 1849 gold rush, you find that, you know, uh, at that time, everybody who was in was within shouting distance of California was, you know, they might have been a doctor, but they quit being a doctor and they started panning for gold. And that, that almost never works. Um, and even if it does work, uh, you know, according to some metric, financial success or whatever it might be, I suspect it leaves you ultimately unsatisfied. So you really need to be very clear with yourself. And I think one of the best ways to do that is this notion of projecting yourself forward to age 80, looking back on your life and trying to make sure you've minimized the number of regrets you have. That works for, that works for career decisions, it works for family decisions. Um, you know, do you want, I, I have a, a 14 month old son and it's very easy for me to, if I think about myself when I'm 80, I know I want to watch that little guy grow up. Um, and so it, it's, I don't want to be 80 and think, shoot, you know, I, I missed that whole thing and I don't have the kind of relationship with my son that I wished I had and so on and so on. So if you think about that, so I, I guess another thing that I would recommend to people is that they always take a long-term point of view. And I think this is something about which there's a lot of uh, controversy. You know, there's a, uh, there's a, you know, some, a lot of people, and I'm just not one of them, believe that you should live for the now. I think what you do is you think about the, 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 the great expanse of time ahead of you and try to make sure that you're planning for that in a way that's going to leave you ultimately satisfied. Um, so this is just my, this is the way it works for me. And I mean, this is, everybody needs to find that for themselves. Um, uh, so I think there are a lot of paths to satisfaction and you need to find one that works, works for you.